In this video, I want to show you how to make an applique mug. And so I have a few examples here. I'm going to show you some examples. We're going to use a slab construction. And here is one example that I've made um, with kind of a woodland theme. You can see it's really inspired by uh, one artist, Lori Ellen Phillips. And you can see I've just covered it all to look like it's in the woodland. And I also have kind of a beginning example here, kind of abstract, or it looks a little bit like a leaf. Um, and so I wanted to show you some ideas from Lori Ellen and also from another person. So let me show you that. Okay, so here is Lori Ellen working. These are some of her um, Instagram reels and you can see she's just using a tool to smooth out it makes it kind of look like a leaf um, I love these I don't even know what this looks like but you want to think of the elements so water wind earth or fire that's what these mugs really end up looking like so here are just some little I don't know moss or something she just is very creative in what she applies she's applying some slip here oh and what I really like about this is this right here how she kind of covers everything up so it looks like it's growing out from the previous layer if you can see that these look like little mushrooms or lichen um, these are awesome if you wanted to do water. These look like little drips or, um, I don't know, something organic. It's all very organic. Here's another one that kind of looks like um, mushrooms or, I don't know, some sort of fungus. <laughs> but you can see she puts the clay down, she smooths it out, and then she uses a tool to get, add that texture. So that's just the basics of um, the process. Here's another one where she's adding a leaf, and I like this because she flattens out the coil, and I should do this. This is something that will make it less heavy. You don't want it to be too heavy down at the bottom, so um, you notice most of these things are at the bottom of the mug, and that's because it makes it heavier. And then she takes a tool to add her texture. Here she's using um, something that she made as a texture mat. So that's another idea. We have lots of textures that you can press into. And then she's adding them on. They kind of look like flower petals. They're really beautiful and delicate. So the thinner you can make things when you apply them, I think the better they look. And then here is another artist. Her name on Instagram is Paige and her P-A-I-G-E, and her Instagram is Woodland Mystic. We are going to be taking notes on the left side of this page, and then on the right side, before you start, I want you to draw out some of your ideas here. You can use pen or pencil, you can use color or not, but I want you to just, you know, make your mug, kind of a simple mug shape, and then doodle or draw what you want to make. So if I want to make maybe fire coming up from the bottom, you know, how is it going to look? Is it going to be layered? Right? Um, is there going to be extra layers coming in? Is this going to be, maybe this would be yellow, and then this part would be orange? I don't know. Um, so kind of give some indication of color and indication of some uh, design with your applique. If you draw that and you're like, I don't like that, all you do is you just go like this and you just draw another one and then you go, oh, maybe I want to make a wave mug. That's what I want to do. And I want to have some 
of the waves crashing down and um, maybe some foam here if I can figure out how to make some foam some white you know white caps or maybe some white caps here so think about how you're going to design it before you start creating really really important okay and then we're gonna get to the clay part Alright, so here we are back in the classroom and I'm going to get started working with our clay. So I have rolled out a slab of clay and in class I will show you how to do this on the slab roller. So you're going to need a flat slab of clay, you're going to need two pieces of the template. I have an 11 by 3.5 inch rectangle and then a circular piece for the bottom. I have some tools for texture. I have slip. A knife is really important. That's a Fetlin knife. I have some texture rollers. I'm going to use this one here, but there's lots of different texture rollers you can use. Like I said, any of the elements. So this one I used a wood grain texture on the base of the mug and so that would be like an earth texture, but you could do a wind texture a fire texture or a water texture. All right, and so I'm just gonna get this situated here and I'm gonna first rib the slab and we are using a card to rib it. And what that just means is I am smoothing out with the edge and I'm compressing the clay. This makes the clay denser and stronger. So we always wanna do this with our slab. And then next I'm going to take the um, roller and I'm going to roll all over where I want my texture to be. And I want my texture to be all over and then I can cover it up later. Um, so I can roll out with a um, rolling pin and a mat. I have stamps that I can use and then I have these rollers here. So I'm going to use the roller this way I think. Um, but like I said, there are lots of tools in our tool bins up at the front of the class and so there's some really cool texture mats and you just put the mat on with a rolling pin, um, kind of the mat upside down, so the texture side down. And then I am using my template and I kind of want to place it where I want the pattern to go. So if I want the pattern to be a different way, I can always tilt it and make it, you know, I don't know, like that maybe so that I have the waves that aren't quite symmetrical. I'm going to use my Fetling knife to cut gently around the slab. I'm trying not to press down very hard on the template so I keep all that nice texture. So I'm just being really delicate. My clay's really wet. Um, so I'm cutting it out. You always want to ball up the clay that you're not using so it stays nice and wet. So just ball that up in case I need it and then I'm going to use the extra part for the bottom and for the bottom um, I'm going to have texture like the place where the mug meets the table so that's why I'm going to actually use the texture part you definitely don't want the texture on the inside of your mug the inside of your mug needs to be just so incredibly smooth um, so that you can clean it easily so this part that's the texture will be facing the outside or whatever is touching the table at the time. So the first thing I want to do is turn my little round cutout over and so that that part, that texture part is um, touching the bottom and then I'm going to smooth out with my card the part that will be the inside of the mug getting all that canvas texture again we don't want any canvas texture on the inside so I'm just taking a minute to smooth that out
and I'm going to use a new tool called a bevel tool and you can see it's a little wood piece with some wires on each side and this helps me cut at a 45 degree angle so if you think of like a picture frame and how the angles at the corners are 45 degrees where the wood meets so I'm just going to line up the edge of my clay with this wood edge right here so see how I line it up right there that wood edge and then I'm going to put my thumb down at the bottom so that when I pull straight down um, I'm protecting that corner so it doesn't tear this corner off so just line it up and pull it straight down and then meet the wire with my thumb and gently release it and then there is my beveled edge and so I'm going to do that on the inside and then I want it to on the other side match up at that 45 degree so I'm going to turn it over and do the same thing on that side on the other side so on each side you bevel again I'm just um, lining it up using my thumb to meet the wire and I have a really nice corner there and I can gently coax the clay into a circular form and you can see how they meet there those um, meet and then there's um, a place for us to score and slip so that's what we're going to do next so the next step is to um, score and slip the two edges together and you really want to be aggressive with your scoring I know I've said this many times but this is like the place where it will be the weakest so scoring helps uh, the clay act like velcro and stick together I have my slip I'm just kind of stirring it up and I'm just going to add some slip to one side with my finger and gently curving the slab around into that mug shape I'm really trying not to press too hard so that I can keep that texture on the outside so you can see I'm just gently attaching them together and I'm putting my hand on the inside I'm gonna put it on the top so I just get a sense of how it um, with the shape that it's supposed to be and I can go down and put my hand down in there and match the bottom to the rim so that it will eventually attach we will be slipping and scoring this and so again I'm mostly pressing from the inside or having some pressure from the inside to really attach and I can blend out with my fingers like I'm doing or of course you're gonna wanna use um, a popsicle stick so a lot of people this bothers them this ragged rough edge to me it doesn't it just shows where it was um, put together but you could always smooth that out with your popsicle stick if you do that you won't have the texture there and that's okay right so that's a choice that you can make so um, the bottom's not on yet but it's just kind of hanging on there a little bit and I'm gonna use my um, blending tools so my popsicle stick on the inside to blend out that seam I want it to be completely seamless so I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to gently take the clay from one side across the seam to the other and I am making some marks but then as I go I can erase those marks or blend those marks in so it should look like that at first and then I can take my popsicle stick I like to clean it off and then move it vertically across those marks to smooth them out and of course you also want to smooth with a finger and all that good jazz um, the whole inside needs to be smoothed because it has that canvas texture but I'm gonna move on right here and what I'm gonna do is score the bottom part as well and so it was easier for me to just take off that bottom part and 
smooth out this part instead of reaching all the way down in there. Okay, so I've gotten it secure and now I'm going to add a slip and score around the edge of the bottom. And so that's what I'm going to do right now. When you are ready to attach, you want to make sure that the bottom matches up with the sides here. So I'm just going to push out from the insides and push from the bottom to match them up so there isn't as big of a gap. And I'm going to do this very gently so I don't ruin the texture on the mug. Um, it's okay if the texture at the bottom gets a little bit rubbed out because I'm going to put my applique on there anyways. This right here is concerning, so I'm just going to push it back together and do a little bit more blending with my finger, or you could use your popsicle stick, but we want that seam to be really secure. We also don't want to put our handle on that seam, so just a little FYI. So you can see how it looks inside and you can see the slip and some of the scoring and we want to make that seam completely seamless and completely smooth so that you can clean the inside of your mug and so what we're going to do is we're going to need to add a coil so I'm going to roll out a pretty thin coil And you want the size of this coil to be a little bit thinner, kind of like the barrel of a pencil. So not quite as thick as the other coils we've rolled in class. And I'm going to gently put it down around the inside there. And you can put it down with your fingers or you can kind of push it down with a popsicle stick. And that's the method I prefer to use. So here I go. So after I get it down there, I'm just kind of pushing it into the corner or the seam as it goes around. And then once it meets the beginning, I can just kind of make a little cut with my popsicle stick. Now I'm really going to push that in there my finger or my popsicle stick and then I also need to do blending. I need to blend both up and I need to blend down. So you're going to watch me blend for a little bit. It's really important that it is completely seamless so like I said before it is easy to clean um, and that bacteria doesn't grow in any of the little crevices. So I'm just going to start blending with my popsicle stick and my fingers. So at this point, I'm going to take a damp sponge and try to smooth out on the inside all of those marks that the tool left behind. And so I'm going to support the bottom and I'm going to push the um, sponge down in there. What I'm actually doing is wrapping the sponge around my fingers and my fingernails so that my fingernails don't nick the bottom there and, and then wrapping or wiping with the sponge. So that's how I reach down in there and smooth it out and I'm very careful. Um, try to just 
handle it with care and you'll see the inside is a lot smoother. I still need to do some work but the inside is definitely some of those marks have been disappeared and and we're trying to get that seamless uh, look down there and seamless texture. I can also use this to go up the sides of the mug on the inside to wipe away the canvas texture which is also important to do. The inside of the mug needs to be super super smooth. So um, that's what I'm doing right here. Published um, some more smoothness but it's getting really really wet. So I'm just gonna let it kind of dry in there before I do any more smoothing but that that's a preliminary smoothing and I don't see any strong crevices or deep um, areas where it could be hard to clean. So I think I'm going to move on. So the next thing I want to talk about is the applique itself and you can see I've done the applique on the bottom here and um, this one is like leaves and woodland type things. Uh, on this mug here, since I did the waves, I want to try to do something with water and waves. And so I'm going to start at the bottom and start adding my applique. I'm just kind of smoothing out the bottom. Um, when you do applique, it is important that you um, score it on. So we're going to be using coils and then we're going to be scoring them on. So I'm just getting kind of my base mug ready and I have a coil here I'm going to start with and let's see what I can create with this. So one thing I want to show you is how you can um, use more than just a coil. So you can use a coil for applique or you can use small balls that you kind of press flat. So here's a small ball and I'm just pressing it flatter almost like a little slab, but I can shape it in the shape that I want or I can cut it out in the shape that I want. So like for this one, uh, maybe I want a leaf shape. Um, this is just an example. I'm not going to put a leaf on my water mug, but um, I can cut out a leaf shape and it's flat enough that I can attach it to my mug. Okay, so anything that you can cut out with a knife, you can attach. So that's just a, a little example. If you don't want to use coils, um, you can use just little balls that you flatten. All right, so moving on, I'm just looking and seeing where do I want to add my uh, coils. I'm going to do kind of... Uh, wave shape. So I'm just kind of putting it on and seeing how it goes. I'm not going to just put it on right now. I need to actually score it. So I'm just getting the basic idea down and getting my coil in the right shape and then I'm going to score and slip it on and blend it in. So I want to make a little mark where I know I need to score so that when I take it off, keep it in that shape, now I can score my mug because you have to score both the mug surface and the surface of the coil. Okay, so I am blending or I'm <laughs> scoring and then I'm going to take um, my coil and also score on that and then add some slip. As I'm doing this, I'm pressing down and I'm making sure I'm supporting from the inside of my mug with the other hand. And then I can use my popsicle stick or a finger uh, or really any tool that you like to blend this coil in and make it really attached to the mug. So I'm blending one side because I kind of want to have that ridge that you saw on some of the other examples on the other side of the coil. So I'm just blending this one side and then I'll also, you know, go in and smooth with my finger and just kind of keep going. Another thing I like to do is just add a little bit of water or really just slip to 
kind of blend any sharp edges because in the end of this we don't want anything sharp because our hands are going to be holding it. So I'm just blending with water or with slip to really smooth out. So I didn't like the way the wave looked on the bottom, so I wanted to add like a bottom part of the wave to make it look more wave shape. So I'm just repeating that process. So I'm putting on my coil, I'm scoring and slipping both the mug and the coil, putting the coil back on, and then blending out. I think I'm also going to blend on the opposite side of the coil so it looks the the ridge is on the outside still and it's blended on the inside. So you don't always have to blend on the bottom side, you can blend on the top side to get a different look or to get the look that you desire. So just remember these this method is meant so that you can create and be um, creative and unique within this method. So the method is just coil, score, slip, attach, blend over and over again in different ways to make different shapes. I think that looks really great and so I kind of want to figure out where I want to put my next little wave and all that good stuff. I just want to fix up the lip here as I'm noticing it's cracking. I want to continue to compress. And another good thing to do to smooth out is use the water in your slip and use a small paintbrush and just go in and clean up any of the slip that has um, come out from underneath and this will also smooth that little seam and seal it a little bit. You want to do this while it's still wet. You don't want to wait until it's dry. So I'm just cleaning up with my paintbrush. Going back you can see how I've added different layers. So I started at the top and then I added a layer below and I added a layer below. So I'm going to do that some more with my uh, waves and such, but you can also add texture. So you can use different tools. Here I um, put in little, just little, the back of a paintbrush to make little dots. So use your, you know, your tools and that, that leaf like I had talked about. I had just slipped and scored a flat piece um, on and then put on some texture with a tool. So the next thing I want to talk about is the handle. And so remember we take a coil and we want a fatter end and a skinnier end, so kind of like a carrot shape where it's wider at one end than the other. And I'm going to drop it down, and wherever I drop it down, that area is going to be flat. I could take my sponge that's wet and stretch it and pull it with my left hand as I stretch with my right hand, and this flattens and elongates that. And then I'm going to make it into like a uh, question mark shape here. So see how it looks like a question mark? And then it will attach at the top and bottom. So a lot of times I make this and I let it sit and dry for a minute. Um, I'm going to attach right here and right here. And I'm going to go right over where I did my applique. So, and I'm not done, but I just wanted to show you this step now so that the video won't be super long. So I am kind of lining it up um, so that it's not off to the side like that, right? So lining it up straight and then marking where I want it to be so that I can put slip and score or score under those areas. So I'm just taking my handle off and then scoring in that section. I'm also going to be scoring my handle because you want to score both sides, okay, and then adding slip. So let's watch me do that. I add it, I push from the outside and kind of give it a wiggle, 
but I'm also supporting with my other hand on the inside. And then I can continue that question mark shape and gently push from the outside and support from the inside. You know, I can clean it up and make it look good. I can also add applique to the handle and in my example or the ones that you see in class, you'll see that I have applique on the handle, which is really fun. It makes it really nice and decorative. And then you can blend it in on the seams um, or you can leave the seams there. Since that's not a part where we worry about food getting into, it's okay if you just see the seam. Um, but I want to make sure it's really attached. And then I'm going to show you how I do a few more ideas with applique. So my project has been sitting in the bag for a day and it's actually still quite wet, but I wanted to show you a bit more about how to make the applique look really good. So um, I need to fix my hand a little bit, but I'll do that in a minute. Um, I forgot to tell you about, or I wanted to tell you about these types of tools. So these are just sculpting tools and they make really nice marks. So if I want to go in and make some lines, I can go in with any edge or any side and make some marks. And if they end up having some rough edges as it dries, we can um, smooth those out. Remember, because we don't want anything wet where our hands go. This tool is also really nice, um, this side and this side. Um, this is a great tool here if you want to just do some smoothing out, blending in. I might want to do that on this side here. I can also cut with this tool here, cut it and then take this kind of paddle-like shape and blend it in. The paddle is also good if you wanted to make marks like that. I don't, so I'm going to smooth them out. Um, there is a ball on the end of this one, so if you wanted to make little indents, but again, I don't. Um, this is also a really nice one for making some different little marks. So play around with the sculpting tools. I also have this one, which I actually really like. It has kind of a dull point here. Um, and then this one is kind of like just a finger. So if like I wanted to smooth all that out, I didn't want to use my finger, that is a great tool. So I want, really want to see what you come up with. I can't wait to see it. Um, remember, the best things are things that are like found in nature. So earth things, wind things, water things, fire. It'd be awesome if I saw some fire mugs. Um, you could glaze those really awesome as well. So think about those elements um, as you start to create your applique on your mug. And I will see you in the classroom. And you can see my examples in the classroom as well. Thanks for watching. Bye.